Police say the fire that brought Mondazir to ruins is arson, and they, uh, though they have no suspects as of this point. Well, earlier today, wind gusts toppled this tree. The Rogue Valley Mall is prepping for its busiest time of the year, holiday shopping. Until a suspect is arrested, police are warning women in Ashland to not walk alone. Earlier today, the Medford Airport was filled with travelers who were trying to get home after the holidays. On days like today, when the sun is shining and the UV index is so high, spent all day sifting through these charred remains to try to determine a cause of this fire. It's, it's the falling ash that's spreading this fire in Ashland. Say, My name is John Bartell. I've been a photog live van op for KDRV for a little over a year now. Before that, I worked for Rogue Valley Community Television, where I set up, directed, and produced the 6 o'clock broadcast. The show I was most famous for was John Bartell's Half Hour of Power. Right. It was a uh, weekly late-night comedy show that I wrote, produced, and hosted. The show was actually a pretty big success. It ran for three years, and that was before I started working for KDRV. But I'll never forget all the things it taught me about what it takes to create a TV show. Uh, KDRV's equipment is definitely an upgrade from what I was used to working with at Community Access, but sometimes it, um, it it requires a special touch, I guess you'd say. But um, it, it definitely has taught me to uh, be more creative and get the most out of what little equipment you do have. Photog on a stick is a device that I came up with to help reporters and myself shoot more interactive stand-ups. I think it helps create the illusion that there's someone behind the camera. This is the first model I've come up with, but I think Photog on a Stick Pro is uh, going to have some sort of attachable remote control so you can zoom the camera in and out. My work with KDRV's Creative Service Department is really where I think I've fine-tuned my lighting and the aesthetics of all my shots. And because of the lax deadline and the experienced staff I work with, um, I really think I've been able to learn the importance of background lighting and framing and shooting multiple shots during a commercial really helps train your eye. Reporting is something I'd like to do down the road. Um, the station lets me do a lot of packages when we're shorthanded or there's breaking news, and I, I really think it helps me understand what reporters are looking for in their stand-ups and in the video they write to. It's getting more responsibility, learning those new tricks of the trade and breaking news. That's, that's really what fuels my fire for news production. And I know that if you ask any of the producers here at KDRV, they'll tell you, you can count on me because I'm not afraid to get the shot. And I really feel that I'm getting towards the peak of my career. I'm, I'm young, I'm ambitious and experienced. I can still take direction. There's no doubt in my mind I'm ready to move to a bigger market. A new hawk will soon fly over Southern Oregon University. For almost 30 years, SOU's mascot has been the Raider Hawks, and a real-life raptor has stood in for a man in a stuffed costume. But as Newswatch 12's John Bartell reports, it takes a lot of work to prepare the bird to represent the school. It's training day, and as most coaches would agree, practice makes perfect. Unlike most trainers, though, Danny Caccini is coaching a different type of athlete. And how do you really feel? Meet Kona. Hey, bud. And Talon. Good bird. Southern Oregon University's mascots and trainers. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go. Chikini is a licensed falconer. Good bird, good bird. He's one of 80 people in Oregon with a permit to handle wild birds. And he's been doing this since he was 14. It's pretty similar to training a dog. Um, we use a something called operant conditioning. Which means associating good obedience with a whistle and food. Hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, his, uh, his manners aren't so good. <laughs> I, don't, I, I tell him not to go out on too many dates. He doesn't have time for that now anyways. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right now, Kona is learning to swoop down in front of an audience. He's already been trained to hunt small animals at speeds of 300 miles an hour. Now Kachini wants go. to train the bird into impressing an audience. To be able to release, a, release an animal and know that, it, that it'll come back to you is a, it's a pretty, pretty amazing feeling. Talent is Kachini's newest bird, 
With only two weeks of training, the red-tailed hawk is now learning to do the same duties as Kona, so they can fill in for each other. Exactly. Caccini's yeah. hoping to have talent ready for the upcoming SOU basketball season. But until the bird's ready, he says he just wants to enjoy the bond between coach and athlete. Yeah, I know. I know. That was fun, huh? Yeah. In Ashland, I'm John Bartell, yeah. reporting. Ashland rowing crew is gearing up for the winter season. These Watch 12 photojournalist John Bartels shows us how the crew stays fit on the water. A perfect day on the water is, is wonderful. It's euphoria for an athlete. The, uh, the water is calm. It's, uh, you're getting a wonderful stroke. Win. Every stroke is just perfect. Um, the joy that I get from it is watching people develop from our novices like we have uh, here a little bit earlier today uh, to being uh, very skilled, whether they're competitive rowers or, or just rowing for the joy of it and watching them, uh, their stroke just develop and their athleticism improve and their physical conditioning improve. The uh, ports are trying to help set up the boat. They're dropping their hands nice and low to keep it off starboard. It's like runners. Runners go out and if they miss a day, they feel they feel like they're, they've lost something. Well, rowers are the same way. If we don't row on a pretty regular basis, three, four, five times a week, we feel like, uh, wait a minute, we're, we're losing it here a little bit, and uh, we miss that, that exercise. That is News Watch 12's John Bartel shows us many visitors say they discovered firsthand why the jail needs the funding. Residents from all over the basin gathered at Klamath County's detention department for the jail's first in-house tour since the detention center opened. So we're allowing folks to see really what's at stake here, that uh, we're at risk of losing, uh, you know, almost two-thirds of the jail. Klamath County has seen a multitude of budget cuts this year, and the jail is on the front line. The sheriff says they're now reaching out for public support as a last-ditch effort to save the department. This year alone, we're 1.2 million short at the sheriff's office. We know that we're going to go in the hole another million next year just in revenue, not to mention the contracts we have to lose. Klamath County jails say their only hope is a levy that will give them a five-year grace period of a locked-in $3 million annual budget. But not all residents think this is a good idea because it will raise property taxes by 59 cents per thousand dollars of their property worth. That, that's, where's my money going to come from? You guys keep wanting more all the time. The Klamath County Jail holds around 152 inmates. Now they're nearly at capacity at this point. So if the levy doesn't pass, jail officials say they may have to release some of these inmates from behind bars out into the public. They're in jail for a reason and um, just getting let go because something doesn't pass, it, it kind of is, is it's a scary thing. Criminals won't be the only ones let loose. Members of the sheriff's department have already received pink slips. Well, immediately, we're going to lose 20 positions at the sheriff's office. We've already given out 13 layoff notices. There's more to follow. And next year, we know that there's another huge decrease in revenue, and that's when we start eliminating patrols. With reduced police enforcement and the threat of more criminals on the street, many Klamath County residents that took the tour tonight said the levy decision is a no-brainer. My limited income is something that has to be, I mean, another 59 cents, 59 dollars a year on a thousand. Uh, without it, we'll be really in trouble. Voters will make their final decision on Measure 1879 May 18th in Klamath Falls. John Bartell, Newswatch 12. Here are some of the sights and sounds of a colorful autumn around the Rogue Valley. Here, everything's so complex. Uh, the pattern of the trees and the, the shadows of the trees and the sound of the water and the blue sky, which couldn't be better, could it? You know? And then, of course, I, this is the time of the year. I mean, I've never seen such wonderful reds and oranges. Uh, it must be a banner year for, for uh, the leaves. The other thing that was very nice, I was doing some sketches down there, and there was a congregation of children, you know, that, four or five years, three, and they were clambering over the rocks and smiling and talking to each other and having a ball, you know. And so it must be a wonderful place for, for kids, you know, a, a little wonderland for them. <laughs> 